Good evening and welcome. This is Primetime News on MITV. I am Tomi Singh Ojo. And we'll begin tonight with the top stories. The federal government has declared Nigeria's unity unshakable. And Nigeria pushes to have a global vaccine equity at the Unga 76. Lagos State government signs anti open grazing bill. And in foreign news, UK holds emergency meeting over soaring gas prices. In sports, Aisha Buhari tournament, Nigeria South Africa clash tomorrow. And now the news in detail. The federal government says in spite of the challenging times the country has gone through over the years, its resolve to remain as one indivisible entity has remained unshaken. Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Muhammad, stated this on Monday at the opening ceremony of the Nigeria at 60 year long photo exhibition. The event with the team, 69 years of art togetherness, was attended by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, and the Head of Civil Service of the Federation, Fala Shadi Yemi Esso. Mohammed said the theme of the photo exhibition was carefully couched to reflect on the unity of the country in the past 60 years, despite its diverse culture, the tradition, practices, languages and challenges. Mohammed explained that for those who did not witness Nigeria's independence in 1960, particularly the students, they can at least look at the photos of the pre-independent Nigeria, the independence proper and the post-independence era. The permanent representative of Nigeria to the United Nations, Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande, says Nigeria will join other world leaders to push for global COVID-19 vaccine equity at the ongoing United Nations General Assembly high-level meetings. Mohamed Bande disclosed this in New York that President Mahmoud Buhari will be joining other global leaders to push for global vaccine access. The Nigerian envoy said that uh, the issue of uh, equal access to vaccines was paramount to the 76th session of the General Assembly based on its theme. The theme for the 2021 General Assembly is building resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19, rebuild sustainably, respond to the needs of the planet, respect the rights of people and revitalize the United Nations. President Mahmoud Buhari arrived in New York on Sunday for the high-level meetings of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. And talking COVID-19 stories, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control NCDC has registered 168 new COVID-19 cases on Sunday, raising the total number of cases in the country since the pandemic began to 201, 798. According to its verified website on Monday morning, the additional 168 COVID-19 infection indicates a decrease from the 336 cases reported on Sunday. Lagos, the hardest hit state, topped the COVID-19 infection chart with 75 new cases, followed by Abia and Niger with 26 and 20 infections respectively. Amongst others were the FCT with 15 cases, Benue with 8, Ogun 8, Oshun with 7 cases, Edo with 3, Kaduna, Kano and Ondo State reported 2 each. The Public Health Agency also added that one person died of COVID-19 related complications on Sunday, increasing the total number of fatalities to 2,655. The NCDC stated that with the new figure, a total number of 190,563 patients have so far recovered from COVID-19 in Nigeria. And the Lagos State government says it is committed to face the menace of drug abuse frontally to reduce the ravage among youths. Governor Babajide Samuel Lucetavis at the Lagos House, Ikeja, during a courtesy visit by the delegates of the Anglican Communion Church of Nigeria, led by the Archbishop, Metropolitan and Primate, Most Reverend Henry Undukuba. Samuelu said his government was building a massive rehabilitation hospital in Ketui Jiri to tackle drug abuse, adding his administration will also ensure strategic partner with the church to ensure people live a better life and provide better space. 
The governance said starts from the leadership of spiritual homes, noting that the government and the church can jointly build a community that will outlive all while restating the commitment to improve the movement of people on road, water, as well as building rail infrastructure to make Lagos a resilient and a livable city. That you are indeed welcome. First is to coincidentally, um, I don't, I'm not anointed yet, but is to coincidentally say that uh, if you look at us, we're clad in some form of purple or the other. And I know purple is only for the bishops. So today, we've actually said we're going to wear purple, and that's why my deputy is in purple cap, my SSG, my chief of staff, and almost everybody. Um, because we know, and we had expected that we're coming to meet our bishops that are in purple. And so we want to most sincerely, most sincerely welcome you to Lagos. First is to thank a primate for all of the very, very generous and kind words that he has used to describe my person and our government. Um, he has shown that indeed he's been watching us meticulously and very carefully. And to assure my primate that all of the words they've used to describe my person and our government, we take them very seriously. We know how important um, those comments are coming from you, and we don't take them lightly at all. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, has also signed a law to prohibit open cattle grazing and trespassing of cattle on land in Lagos State and for connected purposes. By this act, the bill has now become a law. He also signed the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Agency Bill 2020 into law. I think um, it will be in person of uh, Mrs. Lola, Mrs. Lola, Bible, Following the forthcoming People's Democratic Party Congress, aggrieved members of the party met in Ibadan to kick start uh, to kick against a return come 2023. An event attended by Mulikat Akonde Adiola, Nureni Akonde, Abdul Rashid Olokwein, Bolarumi Hazim, Femi Babalala, and a host of others, members drawn from all the 33 local government areas of the state vowed to ensure they do everything possible to prevent the emergence of the governor, Shegi Makinde, from getting the party's ticket for a second term. The members who voiced their displeasure said again the governor's promise. Uh, against the governor's promise, uh, promise before and during the election, they have been neglected, while those who were not around during the election are the ones benefiting from government. A convict spoke earlier said, never again would they entrust their destinies into the hands of someone like the incumbent governor. If we do the Congress together, it will be one list. Where the uh, one side refuses to do with the other side, it means there will be two lists. You know what I mean. If it gets dropped, then the party will have to tell us if the, uh, uh, the side that the list is not accepted, are they not party members? And you know, the law says you cannot exclude anybody from the Congress as long as the person buys form. We bought the form, we got receipt for the form, so that will mean exclusion. I think that uh, they need to, all of us must be on deck to prepare the member, to send the signal outside for the member for them to be well attended in their various world to be coordinate themselves not to do anything within us not to fight each other to be a good ambassador in their various world <laughs> Nigeria's local currency, Naira, is currently facing severe pressures following it to a record depreciation against the U.S. dollar in both 
the parallel market in investors and exporters I and E window. This came at the backdrop of the $600 million accretion to the nation's foreign reserves during the week. In the parallel market, the exchange rate rose to 570 naira per dollar on Friday from 540 naira per dollar the previous week, losing 30 naira, the highest in recent years. In the INW window, the naira depreciated by 88 cover as the indicator uh, as the indicate exchange rate dropped to 412 naira 88 cover per dollar on Friday from 412 per dollar the previous week. However, the volume of dollars traded 10 over in the window rose from 35% to 975.63 million dollars last week from 724.11 million dollar traded the previous week. In foreign news, Paul Ruseza Bagina, the Hotel Rwanda hero, who became a fierce government critic, was found guilty on Monday on terror charges. We'll bring you details of that story and others from the foreign scene after this break. Welcome back. The Hotel Rwanda hero, Paul Rosesa Bagina, who became a fierce government critic, was found guilty on Monday on terror charges after what his supporters say was a politically motivated show trial. He was convicted of backing a rebel group blamed for deadly gun, grenade and arson attacks in Rwanda in 2018 and 2019. Justice Beatrice Mukamurenzi said at the end of a seven-month trial that Rusesa Bagina founded a terrorist organization that attacked Rwanda. He financially contributed to terrorist activities. Rwanda prosecutors have sought a life sentence for Rusesa Bagina, the 67-year-old former hotelier credited with saving hundreds of lives during the 1994 genocide and whose actions inspired the Hollywood film. Neither he nor his lawyers were in court for the verdict, although the 20 other defendants in the case attended. Rusesa Bagina who used his fame to denounce the Rwandan leader Paul Gagame as a dictator was arrested in August 2020 when a plane he believed was bound for Burundi landed instead in Rwandan capital, Kigali. And at this month, Kagame had dismissed criticism of the case, saying Rusesa Bagina was in the dark, not because of his fame, but over the lives lost because of his actions. He says he didn't commit any crime, when everybody knows, as well as Rusesa Bagina, that elements of Kagame's forces were behind the atrocities that took place from 1990 and after 1994. And the UK government was on Monday holding an emergency meeting with the energy and consumer groups as the country experienced the record gas prices, the threatening huge bills for households, as well as undermining food supplies and casting doubt on energy firms' future. Prime Minister Boris Johnson sought to reassure consumers fearing surging winter power bills and the possibility of more small British energy firms collapsing from higher cost. Faced with a fast-moving situation, Business Secretary Kwasi Kwateng was meeting with the energy industry and consumer groups. Speaking during a visit to the United States, Johnson said people should be reassured in the sense that yes, there are a lot of uh, short-term problems, not just in the country, but around the world caused by gas supplies and shortages of all kinds. Prices of natural gas in Britain have hit record highs also driven up after a fire knocked out a vital point connecting the powers the country's power grid to France. Wholesale prices for gas have rocketed 70% since August, adding to already strong inflation that has been stoked by staff shortages as economies reopen after pandemic lockdowns. A volcano in Spain's Canary Islands has destroyed houses, authorities said on Monday, as a spewed lava and ash after coming to life over the weekend and uh, forcing some 5,000 people from their homes. The regional government spokeswoman said a number of houses have been destroyed, adding that they were still surveying the area to determine precisely how many properties have been engulfed. 
Sergio Rodriguez, a local mayor in the nearby village of El Paso, said at least 20 homes were completely destroyed by the Cumbre Veja volcano, which erupted Sunday for the first time in 50 years. Rodriguez said the lava left absolutely nothing in its path, stating that residents were living in uncertainty. The Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez cancelled a scheduled trip to the New York for the United Nations General Assembly after the eruption. And Greece on Monday began moving asylum seekers to the first of several new EU-funded closed camps on its islands, hours after a fire touched a part of the current facility. Rights groups oppose the new camps, saying that the strict access measures in them are too restrictive. General Secretary for Asylum of the Greek Migration Ministry, Manos Lugutetis, said at the island of Samos that today was a historic day, a day of joy for the group. Lugutetis said that out of some 400 people at the current Vathi camp at Samos, 270 have said they want to move to the new Zervol facility. The first bus with 22 people on board was already heading to Zervol, Lugutetis said. The ministry is prepared to register up to 200 people today and the remainder on Tuesday, he also concluded. Taiwan has threatened to take China to the World Trade Organization over a Chinese ban on the import of custard and wax apples. Chinese customs authorities made the announcement on the, of the ban on Saturday that China would from Monday ban the import of custard and wax apples from Taiwan, citing concerns over the pest Planococcus minor. Taiwan Premier Su Sheng Chang said China's decision lacked scientific basis and violated the principle of non-discrimination under the World Trade Organization, demanding Beijing to respond by the end of September. Responding to China's sudden suspension, the Council of Agriculture announced on Sunday it will spend 1 billion Taiwan dollars, that's about 35.96 million US dollars, in promoting the sales of wax and custard apples, both domestically and overseas. You're still watching Primetime News on MITV. We now move to Sports Stories. Please stay tuned. Nigeria go join what do with every other country for this world to enter the battle what they call digital broadcasting. This digital broadcasting, the better part those time when we say we will go and go to Toronto TV and not be that one. You go sit down for your comfort now. You go watch better. The TV go play way way. The people with this side go play way way. The sound man go come out well. The channel say go increase the local local TV waiting for the Obodo Nigeria say go come out first where we come clear way way. My people, Nigeria. The enter digital. Coming to Lagos now. This is your radio. This is your radio. Star FM 101.5 gives you the best of music, news, talk, entertainment, and sports like never before. We give you incisive news every hour, quality music, and sports all day round. Listen to the most entertaining, creative morning show on radio as Star FM gives you top newspaper review, headlines about politics, business, crime, events, and entertainment stories between 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. daily. Our midday show gives you classic, up-tempo, and contemporary opera music to start your day and get you energized between 10 to 12 noon daily. We start it fresh. fresh. Now, take your lunch with us on Launch Our launch Show our between show. 12 noon and 2 p.m. as we pack you with good mix of music loaded with interactive live chart, comedy, game shows, and current events. Our world of sports on Star FM comes on daily at the 5 o'clock hour, 6 o'clock hour, and 10 o'clock hour daily on Star. Our evening belt showcase a mix of open music, oldies laced with big jokes, talent on shows, and relationships. You don't want to miss is the PM Group. PM Group. 
day and round up your day with us on Body and Soul, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Daily with the very best of rhythm and blues, cool music to take you to Wonderland. Join us daily as we give you the very best of music, news, sports, talk, and all-round entertainment. Star FM 101.5, entertaining you all the time. Star FM, your favorite radio station. Star FM on DSTV 869. Welcome back to Sports Story. South Africa has been the standout team at the ongoing Aisha Bukhari Invitational Women football tournament but uh, Super Falcons goalkeeper Jewante Balogun believes the Bayana Bayana will meet a superior power when they face Nigeria tomorrow. South Africa defeated Ghana 3-0 on March day 3 of the competition to announce their intention at the Mubalaji Johnson Arena Lagos. The Bayana Bayana have always been hard nuts for the Super Eight Falcons who most times rely on experience to overcome the South Africans. And now as things stand, the South Africans have shown qualities that have forced pundits to rate them as a team to beat. Belogo expressed optimism that Nigeria would beat South Africa, noting the Super Falcons have experienced and committed players that would give Bayana Bayana a good fight. In Nigeria's opening game against Mali, substitute Griff Monday, this brace gave the Falcons the victory. And FIFA has invite invited football's national federations to an online summit on September the 30th to discuss the international calendar and its push to host the World Cup every two years instead of four. World Football's governing body wants to launch a new consultation phase for the international women's and men's calendar, set to expire at the end of 2023 and 2024, respectively. FIFA said in a statement on Monday that there was a broad consensus within the game that the international March calendar should be reformed and improved. The controversial proposal for a biannual World Cup was revived in March by former Arsenal manager Asen Wenger, now head of global football development at FIFA. The idea would be to have an international tournament each year from 2025 to 2026, alternating World Cups and continental tournaments like the European Championship and Copa America. And that brings us to the end of the news tonight. But before we go, let's quickly take a recap of our stories. The federal government has declared that Nigeria's unity is unshakable. And in COVID-19 stories, Nigeria pushes for global vaccine equity at the United Nations General Assembly 76. And the Lagos State Governor has signed into law the anti-open grazing bill. In foreign news, the United Kingdom holds an emergency meeting over soaring gas, gas prices. In sports, Aisha Buhari tournament, Nigeria and South Africa clash tomorrow. And that's it with the news tonight. Many thanks for joining us. Do visit our website www.mitvonline.ng for details of tonight's stories and many more. I am Tomisi Ojo. Have a pleasant night. Good night. <laughs>